Today on Nerd Out, Hardware Wallets. Welcome back to Nerd Out, the show where we take a look at Cardano and we break it down, but we don't dumb it down. Today we're taking a deep dive into hardware wallets, uh, what they are, kind of how they work. Uh, we won't go into too low level stuff. Um, this is more for people who are delegators today, but um, we just want to take a quick look at hardware wallets. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So what are hardware wallets? The, the primary hardware wallets are Trezor and Ledger. And these are little devices, you connect them to your computer and they hold all of your private keys. So before we jump into the details, let's talk about why hardware wallets matter. So I received this message the other day from somebody who delegated to my pool. And as you can see, reading through it, they had all of their ADA stolen from them. And so then I, I looked through the transaction logs, um, used the ADA Stat Explorer, dug through it, and then I found this wallet that was just going through and just stealing small bits, in some cases large bits of ADA from various different wallets. Um, these aren't all from this person, but so I think what happened is they got some malware on their computer, and then um, over time it, uh, it was able to steal their either their data list or your Woi wallet database, and then um, it was able they were able to crack the spending password. So let's first talk about software wallets. So software wallets are data list in your They are installed on the Mac PC or mobile. And the, the main idea here is they keep all of your public and private keys and they store them in a database. And in that database, the private keys are protected by your spending password. Um, so while this offers some protection and pretty good protection if you have a really, really good and long spending password, um, it is still crackable. There were some people who lost their seed, uh, seed uh, mnemonics during the ITN and people were able to get into their keys and help them get their ITN rewards as long as they still knew their spending password. So it is possible to crack a uh, software wallet. So if some malware does get on your machine, you are not protected, especially if the malware contains a keylogger, because then they not only have your database, but then they straight up have your spending password. So how does a transaction in a software wallet work? Well, it works like this. You create a transaction in the wallet. That's where you enter, you know, the sending address and how much and then finally you provide a spending password. This unlocks the database and then it will cryptographically sign that transaction with the private keys. And then you submit that to the blockchain and then as a signed transaction and then that's included in the next block usually. So how does that different uh, from a hardware wallet? Well, the, the main difference is this signing transaction happens on the PC and you know at that point, because of malware, the keys at, at some point in memory, they are in the clear. So how is that different on a hardware wallet? So we still create the transaction, same as usual. You provide a pin to unlock the hardware device. I recommend if they allow you to use four characters, I recommend you use all eight. And then the transaction is sent over USB to the hardware device. It's signed on the hardware device with the little microcontroller on the hardware device, and then it's sent back. So the key is never exposed. It never leaves this hardware device, and there's no way that it can be just manually pulled off the hardware device in any way. So the key has to remain on this hardware device. And then step four, it's still submitted to the blockchain. So how do you go about getting a hardware wallet cell to set up? Um, first, order one on Amazon, whatever, um, or get it from the, the Trezor or Ledger directly. I do not recommend getting a used one just in case. Um, and then you'll plug that in once you have it set up and configured with, you'll still get seed words, you'll still, and then you'll set up a pin with it usually. 
and then you'll want to open your Daedalus or your Roy and you'll want to pair that wallet. So when you pair the wallet, it's going to ask you to export your public key. The public key can then be sucked into the wallet and that's so the wallet can be able to generate all of your receiving addresses. But your private signing keys are still protected on that hardware wallet. So it's really just a simple two-step process. You click the add wallet and then you'll click on this pair to pair the hardware wallet device and it'll walk you through the steps of uh, getting that set up. So once you have that wallet set up, you can go to your old account and then just send all the ADA into one of the receiving addresses of the hardware wallet. So that's kind of how you move over. And then once you're in that, that hardware wallet, you can do everything like you could before. You can stake it. Um, you can send it. You'll just have to always have that hardware wallet plugged in if you want to send. You can still get on. You can still receive funds without the wallet plugged in. But if you want to send, you have to have those private keys connected, plugged in, so that they can sign those transactions on the device. So what is my recommendation for hardware wallets? If you have more than $100 US dollars worth of crypto, go and get a new hardware wallet and use it. Um, step two is see step one. There's really no good reason. They aren't that expensive. Um, these little Ledger Nano S's work great and they're like 50 bucks on Amazon. So it is totally worth it. It will give you a, a lot of peace of mind um, and you don't have to worry as much about uh, malware or whether the, the environment you're on is secure. And with that, nerd out.